Hi. Hi. It was telling me, it was like, you have to rotate your phone. And then I was like, wait, does it need to be up or down or what? So we got it figured out. That is perfect. So welcome on. Let me introduce you first. Um, So Crystal is the host of the Profit Podcast, right? And founder of crystalprofit.com, as well as the beautiful creator of the um, Profit Podcasting dedicated to to teaching women how to market, uh, sell, um, really how to um, just start, launch, and market their podcasts. So welcome, Crystal. It's so great to have you here. Yes. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me, Danielle. It, yes. This is so fun. Um, I love talking to women, like you said, and I just, with yeah. entrepreneurism, just being the way that it is, like, I just, mm. I love connecting with other women that have, like, we can geek out about the same yeah. things. Like, that just <laughs> sets my heart on fire because- yeah. Not all of my friends and family, I can say, oh, I'm trying to build my email list or I'm trying to do this. And they're like, what are you talking? Like, it's a totally different language. And so it's so much fun to connect with other women who are, you know, trying to grow or scale their business or even just get started. That's what's so much fun for me. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. And she's from Texas. Everyone, Crystal's from Houston, right? (laughs) So I live in Houston now, but I'm originally from the Northeast Texas, uh, the Tyler area, which is just um, an hour east of Dallas. Perfect. Or sorry. Yeah. East of Dallas. Awesome. (laughs) And I told, I told Crystal what this was a few weeks ago. I was like, you're going to be my first person from Texas. And then we had randomly someone on from last week from Texas. I was like, well, well, (laughs) so we're just starting the line now. Just right. Exactly. So So, Crystal, I want to know what really inspired you? How did you dive into the world of podcasting? Oh my gosh. Like, I feel like this is a several year long story. It's not like a, you know, I just woke up and said, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast. It's like really every other not. entrepreneur, right? I know. Yeah. Like it's, and it's really crazy because only in looking back over the yeah. last year, the last several years, can I see a pattern of things developing. So yeah. for me, um, I was in the corporate world. I worked mm-hmm. for a large um, construction, like a general contractor um, firm that was out of Dallas yeah. And I was an accountant for them and I was doing this job and I was really Mm. good at it. And in the sense of everyone told me I was really good at it and which really meant that I was personable. I'm just, I've always loved interacting with people and everything, but I hated the work. Oh my Mm. gosh. The work just did not fulfill me. Like I, I just, I, it wasn't for me. And so mm-hmm. um, my husband and I, we moved our family um, for a relocation in his job. And with that job, they said, well, we still have stuff for you. You can just work remotely out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is the dream job, right? You can work from home. Yeah. It was actually increase in pay and just oh, all wow. the things. Wow. I hated what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And so I pursued it for a few months and it just did not fulfill me. So I started staying at home at the time yeah. we had, I have three sons now, but at the time we had two little boys and I thought mm-hmm. I would rather be at home than yeah. doing this because I'm basically just paying for childcare at this point anyway. Yeah. And I didn't feel like it was, it was really great for my time. So I yeah. did what any any rational overachiever would do. And I I (laughs) dove into being the stay at home mom, that role just head first and not in a healthy way. Like Mm. I was, everything needed to be Pinterest perfect. And I needed to Uh. do all these things with my kids. And I just was like, I thought being a stay at home mom should fulfill me in a certain way too. Mm. And it really didn't. And it took me so long to admit that because you're an awful mom. If you admit that you don't love every second with your children, right? So, so it took me a long time. And then, um, when I did realize that I started dabbling in a few things, Mm -hmm. I started writing like journaling and then I published a book. I self published Mm -hmm. a book on Amazon and I started blogging and I started a YouTube channel and I did all these things. Yeah. And they were fun. Like I was still having fun because I was learning. Yeah. But in my beginning stages of staying at home, I started following this blogger and then she started a podcast. And up until this point, I had been consuming podcasts for a long time, but major podcasts, like 
Dave Ramsey and Christy Wright and all these mm. like people that are part of, I mean, they're million dollar companies. Yeah. They're huge companies that yeah. I'm listening to. And I'd never even thought of an everyday person having a podcast because I wasn't listening to them. Yeah. And so when this blogger I was following started hers, I thought, hmm. maybe I can do this. Yeah. Like, hmm. Maybe I could do this too. <laughs> and like that seed was planted and I just kind of took off and I just awesome. ran with it. And I was Googling and YouTubing and trying to figure everything out. And so what I do today is so much rooted in mm. those beginning stages for me because it was so frustrating and so yeah. overwhelming to figure it out. And I, I want people to understand it doesn't have to be that hard. I made it way more complicated yeah. than it needed to be, but I just, that's what I do. So that's what my podcast is about now. I mm. teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. And that's what my digital course focuses on. And just mm. everything that I do, I feel like such a geek when I say this, but I, just, <laughs> I love talking about this because it's that's so awesome. much fun to me. So I know that was like, that's still the short version, but that was no, really long No, that's winded. perfect. And I think I just uh -huh. want to pick up on something that you said is that you felt really guilty on doing something for yourself. Right. But I think for all parents to know is that our kids will look on us, like take what we can give, right? right. If they see us, you know, powering through, being successful, being, doing what we want to do. That right. is such a beautiful and huge reflection on us. Right. And um, uh, that's a beautiful message. Thank you so much. Well, and it's so much fun too. So my children now, so like I said, I have three boys. I have mm. a 10 year old, a seven year old and wow. a three and a half year old. Wow. So my middle son, he's actually the one that's most like infatuated because I have a microphone. Mm. And so he'll come in here and be like, can I talk on your microphone? Like, can I play? And I'm oh, like, yeah, sure. Yay. Like we've recorded sessions, y'all. It's oh. so precious and so cool. Oh, I and I that. will just <laughs> cherish these because I'll just interview them. I'm like, well, what's your favorite color? What do you want to be when you grow up? And they think it's funny and they think it's silly, but it's just, it's so much more than that to me That's because so they I see mommy that. doing something that yeah. she really likes, that she mm. really enjoys and yeah. they see how much it fulfills me. And so that's, that's just priceless. Mm. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and so they're allowed to now be fulfilled. Yes, exactly. Which I love. Exactly. Um, you also have a beautiful motto, which is if anyone goes to her podcast page and sees this, you're going to see this beautiful motto. It's, we all have to start somewhere. So can you tell us how you've grown from your first segment, from your first episode until now, how you've grown personally, your <laughs> mindset, how beautiful you are, how much shiny you are from the inside out? How have you grown? Oh my gosh. Like, so first of all. Mm -hmm. I, it's funny cause I did, I did a podcast interview for someone else's podcast yesterday and there was a recurring theme and I'm going to share it with you here because yeah. it's like, it's the biggest life lesson that I've learned in the last probably 10 years. And that mm -hmm. is give yourself grace, give yourself some grace, allow yourself to mess up because it's mm -hmm. going to happen. Oh my gosh. You mentioned my first episode. Y'all, I totally <laughs> messed up my first interview. I didn't even yeah. have my microphone plugged in. Okay. Oh. <laughs> like... Step one, basics, yeah. number one. I did not yeah. have my microphone plugged in. I recorded this entire interview. And thankfully, it was someone mm. I went to high school with. I've known this girl forever and ever. And, um, and she's a fitness expert. And so mm. I interviewed her, and her audio came out amazing. Oh, so I was beautiful. able to go back and fix everything I messed up, thankfully. But it's like, okay, that one thing really could have shut me down and I could have yeah. just turned off the mic and said, I'm not cut out for this. But I just said, you're just starting, like, just keep going. It's going to get better. Yeah. It's going to get better. Yeah. And even still to this day, I get frustrated. You know, mm -hmm. um, I still have technical difficulties. I mean, I'm not immune <laughs> oh, yeah. to internet problems or kids oh, yeah. busting in the door during an interview. Ooh. I mean, it's yeah. just, it all happens. So I, my biggest lesson, if I were to go back and tell myself on that very first day, would be give yourself some grace. Mm. You're going to mess up. Things will ha – like, life happens, but just keep going. Like, we all have to start somewhere, and that's really yeah. where that is rooted, is just to remind people it's okay if you're – like, you're just – like, Oprah – 
had to start somewhere, yeah. you know, yeah. Beyonce had to start somewhere, like yeah. any successful person, they had to start somewhere. And the difference between them and someone who doesn't make it to that level is they just, they quit or they yeah. give up. So, yeah. and I think that's so beautiful, whatever, you know, division you're in, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in corporate, I think people expect the results immediately. Yes. And they don't think, oh, I need to actually work towards it. Um, we always see the finishing results between any entrepreneur, any successful person out there. We see what they're doing right here, right now. And we don't mm -hmm. see the stepping stones of what they took or what they had to do in order to get there. And so right. I think that's beautiful that we're showing that middle ground right now. Yes. Is there anything for those newbie um, podcast beginners that are so concentrated on one specific thing that at the end of the day that you've learned is really not a big deal? Is there anything like one type of thing that you're like, oh my gosh, I need to concentrate on this, this, this. And you're like, why, why was I so consumed? I was so consumed with that, that it took away my creativity at that time. It just took my time right. away. Well, I think that the number one question that I get over yeah. and over again, and the one thing that people are concerned about is equipment. Like they're just yeah. freaking out about, I don't have a $50,000 studio. And I, I'm like, I don't either. Like I started <laughs> the first 38 episodes of my yeah. podcast and I don't have it like right here, but it's like right behind yeah. it. I was a $21 microphone. I spent oh, wow. $30 to get started. I spent, wow. I bought a $21 microphone and I bought one of those pop filters that you put over the microphone. Okay. And that was all like, and people are like, Oh, well I've got to spend $500 on this microphone yeah. and then on this mixer and this condenser and like all these things yeah. that they just don't matter. Like the technology and the equipment, like what is your message? That yeah. is the number one thing, not how can I get more downloads? How can I make money? How can I do it? Like, mm -hmm. what is your message? How are you going to add value to someone else? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are self-centered, even if it's like not in an obvious way, they're like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to start this because I'm helping people. But really everything is about their stories, their yeah. experiences. There's no outsider perspective. And so it's very just self-centered. And so my word of advice to them is like, mm. it's not about you. It's about the value that you can add. So one piece of advice and is I get over the equipment, oh, keep it simple. Oh no, that's okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say like, get over the equipment, keep it as simple as possible and just don't make it about you. It is about your audience. Yeah. It's about your listeners. Yeah. And I think you brought up such a beautiful point there where it's more love that we can hold for someone else that's going to bring us to the top. I think there's an 80s mentality that still lingers around a little bit saying, oh, I have to push, push, push. I have to hustle. I have to work hard. It has to be about me because if it's not about me, no one else is going to really pay attention to me. Right. But really, they're paying attention to how you're serving right. more so than what you're doing. It's who you, right. the person you're being rather than the person you're doing. And right. I think that's, that's a perfect um, matchup by what you said. Um, I love that so much. So have you seen a difference? Because, I mean, doing podcasts is not all about you per se, it's about, you know, someone else you're speaking to on the other side. Is there a big difference between um, doing a podcast where it's an interview style rather than doing a podcast where it's just you? Is there more concentration? What, what really has to unfold differently? So for, um, for anybody that I help, like I've, I've done some consulting and I've, um, like I said, I have this yeah. course that I do and the students, they've asked yeah. that same question. Should we have okay a solo show or should we do interviews? And I think the best answer is to do both. I think mm -hmm. that if your schedule allows for you to yeah. have interviews all the time, then I think that that's amazing, but that's not how it works for everybody. You know, yeah. things come up yeah. and I don't want you to be stuck with, you know, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Someone had to yeah. cancel last minute, their kid was sick or they had to go out of town or whatever, you know, life scenario happens. Yeah. I think that, um, and actually I heard this from Amy Porterfield. She has the online marketing made easy podcast, which mm. if you're in business, I highly, highly suggest it mm. because she has so many great actionable tips. But what she 
has done and what I've, um, I don't do this necessarily. I do this a lot when I'm batching my own personal episodes, but I come up with four to six ideas mm -hmm. of shows that I can do totally by myself. And then I scatter in two to three interviews here and there because it wow. still establishes you as an expert, right? Because mm -hmm. you are bringing this valuable information to your listeners, but then it also gives you the opportunity to bring in someone that you may not be an expert on. Like I, I do not that. claim to be a social media expert by any stretch of the imagination, I love but that. that's a great opportunity for me to reach out to someone who is also growing their business mm. or, you know, like they would be more like willing to come and say, yes, I would love to be on your podcast. You know, mm -hmm. your audience, like our audiences align and we can help each other out. So it's kind of like this wow. reciprocation of just audiences and knowledge and service and value. And that's how I see it. Mm. And I think that it's a great place to start. Um, I think if you only have a solo show, unless you're a, like a household name or you're a celebrity, yeah. I think it can yeah. really only take you so far. Got you. Got you. Um, now, how do you teach your clients how to deal with imposter syndrome, especially through women entrepreneurs? Um, it's, it can get lonely, right? And it can yes. get almost like dog eat dog in a way. So I, a lot of people struggle with the idea of, I don't think I'm cut out for this. You know what? I don't know if I'm the best. And they work from their mind and not their heart. How do you bring right. your clients back to your heart? Well, something that, um, what I like to teach people is, um, podcasting is all about planning, like mm. laying out the plan. And yes, it's about the content, but it's about yeah. not just knowing it, but really planning it out. And then once someone, one of the first exercises that we do is coming up with 20 ideas, because if you think mm, about it, it, 20 ideas is five months worth of podcasting. So not only does that give you, you know, margin in your life yeah. to come up with yeah. that many ideas, but it, you also prove to yourself, like, you know, this stuff, yeah. because if you sit there and you doubt and you think yeah. every single week, what am I supposed to talk about? That's when that negativity really creeps mm. in. And it's like, wow. yeah, you don't know what you're talking about because you can't think of another idea or, you know, so-and-so said this better. So you should just give up now. Like mm. your, uh, your opinions don't matter. But if you have this laid out in front of you and you're looking at it and you're like, wow, you'll surprise yourself because you're mm. looking and you're like, I know all of this stuff. And I know <laughs> that this could help Danielle. This could help Brittany. This could help I Sarah. Like, this could help all of these women, you it. know, and I have to, this is kind of like a silly way, but it's how I've always thought of ideas yeah. is, I feel selfish when I learn something new and I don't mm. share that information. So if someone were just starting, think of it the same way. Like if your podcast is about cooking, you are a personal chef and you want to teach other people how to become a personal chef. What knowledge can you share with someone who's just starting to go down that path? Like how can you give them tools and resources and strategies and everything to better their life. And then man, like, like the sky's the limit. Like if yeah. you really think about it in that way, you'll never run out of content ideas. Oh, I love it. I love it. And it's just a value exchange at the end of the day that, yes, you know, someone's going to need this content, you right. know, someone's going to take so much value and so much, um, appreciation from the content yes. itself. Yes. Oh, I love that so <laughs> much. Um, <laughs> So can you give us a little bit of your, just a few tips for us on what you mentioned with the beginner's guide of starting, launching, and marketing or podcast? How can we just get a few little tips and tricks on each uh, subject and then eventually okay. get more when working with you, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So there is, so I think of it, it's like a three-step approach, you know, start, launch, mm. and market. But start is really kind of a part one and part two phase because okay. that's where the bulk of everything happens. And it's kind of like, you know, you plant the seed and, you know, you're watering it and you're getting frustrated because it's not growing. <laughs> but then when you get to the launch, that's when the seed pops out. And then the market mm -hmm. is just watching it grow, like just oh, watching everything happen. That's so beautiful. in the start phase is really when you, you know, you're picking out your equipment, like yeah. I said, don't go crazy. Like something cheap, 
can work. <laughs> like I only yeah. have the microphone I have right now, even though I've been doing this for mm-hmm. a while, this costs a hundred dollars and oh, wow. I'm the cheapest person on the planet. First of all, <laughs> the only reason why I upgraded was because I got an Amazon gift card and yeah, that I, I was like, I know how I'm going to spend this. So don't get caught up in having super fancy stuff. The next thing would be to plan out as much as you can beforehand. Mm. If you could come up with a hundred ideas even, and if you only post once a week, like that's two years worth of content. So plan, plan, plan. Like I cannot say it enough. Like that to Mm. me is more important than you know, your pretty graphics or, you know, if you create or have fancy guests on your show, like all the things, like it's so important to plan. So that is a must. The next part, and this is where some other people get really caught up is the technology. There is a learning curve. Like I personally use Audacity. It is a free um, software that record, you edit, like you do all the things in there and it can be kind of intimidating. This is where I start to lose people. Mm. But I think of it like go back to the days, you know, in grade school or whenever you learned PowerPoint. Yeah. Right. Like it's super intimidating to learn like, okay, I can do all these animations and I can add this slide and I can, you know, make things explode and I can do all these things. (laughs) There's so many features to it, but now I mean, I'm sure, Danielle, you've probably been working in PowerPoint or Google (laughs) Slides or whatever it is for so long that you don't even, it's second nature. And so that is how it is. It's just a learning curve. Take a deep breath, give yourself some grace, Mm. and you will figure it out and it will get easier. Um, So that's really the start um, portion of how you want to launch a podcast. And then the next part is um, the launch phase. Mm. So... Stu McLaren, if you know who he is, him and Christy Wright, um, he mainly teaches membership sites and, and marketing strategies. And Christy Wright has the Business Boutique. And she has a, the Business Boutique podcast. And they had a phenomenal interview about launching a product, a service, whatever it is that you're mm-hmm. launching. And he said, the reason that blockbuster movies are blockbuster movies is because mm-hmm. they have a really long uh, runway. So mm-hmm. I just went to the movies the other day with my kids and we saw previews for something that's coming out over Christmas, yeah. you know, but that seed's been planted. Now, you know, what's going to happen. And so how I relate that back to podcasting is don't like decide today. Okay. I'm going to start a podcast and I'm going to launch it tomorrow. That's not a good idea. Yeah. I recommend to people Four weeks to six weeks is ideal if it's, if you can make it even longer without getting kind of antsy. Cause I know like it's exciting <laughs> and it's fun. Like yeah. have a launch plan in place, mm. you know, start your Facebook group, start creating marketing materials and telling people, Hey, I'm going to start a podcast because yeah. you're going to get those questions that you need to answer anyway. What's it about? Who's it for? How can it help me? And the more you talk about it, then the bigger the launch you're going to have. And then the final Mm. stage with marketing is, oh, it's just where I totally geek out. My background, I went to school for marketing and I just, I love it. I love talking about graphics and the audiograms and all the cool things that you can do. Even talking to you here, Danielle, like this is such (laughs) a great marketing strategy yeah. to connect with other people that are yeah. like-minded yeah. have have similar audiences or just somewhere you can add value like mm. that's just the biggest thing is to be genuine yeah. and just to how can I help you how, yeah. not what can you do for me but how can I help you so mm. those I would say those are the basics and adding that more, I, this conversation is just about value, right? Yes, I just, value. <laughs> and grace. Value, 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 value and grace. Value and grace. <laughs> oh, that's so delicious. I love it. Um, <laughs> does anyone get discouraged? So I can just hear my listeners going, oh, the marketing phase must be so hard. Everyone's starting a podcast and their ego is kind of just like, yeah, nah, 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 nah. how do you just, okay, hey, it's okay. You know what? Right. It's a journey. It's not a destination. Um, Is there any individual ways we can stand out from other podcasters similar to us? Well, for me, it goes back to the planning side. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like everything goes back to planning because if you do all the hard work up front and it's not easy, like it's not easy to sit down with a blank sheet of paper or a whiteboard or a Google doc and say, 
What am I going to talk about? Yeah. But once you figure those things out, then that's what separates you. That's when you can have the opportunity to what amazing mm. stories can I tell that relate to this? Mm. Or what guests do I know that can help, you know, bring their audience into this conversation too, and mm. to add even more value <laughs> to everything. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it really goes back to, you know, just yeah. how can you connect with people? Like, how can you connect with people and bring them into the conversation and then just, just keep it going? Mm, I love that. It's, it's not just about, in, in the sense, you and me, but it's about the whole picture. I yes. think it's kind of what you're saying. It's about the whole yeah. picture that people can share that this is part of their livelihood. Like, this is their mark on the world. This is how right. they made a difference. This is how they made an impact. So, and that's a great way, instead of looking at me, 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 okay, I'm still doing me, but I'm serving on such a higher level. Yes. And, and oh, I think that beautiful. you have to bring like the quirkiness of your personality. Like I, okay. So this is like totally silly. <laughs> I write funny poetry and I have mm. not done this in forever, but I get this <laughs> from my dad like, growing up. We would make up like I'm the generation of like listening to Weird Al Yankovic, like listening oh, yeah. to him and oh, all yeah. his parodies, and I <laughs> loved it. All my like my dad and I, we would just make up stupid songs, and so I, love I bring that to the table. Like I'm kind of silly, I'm kind of goofy, and I just mm. bring that. And I understand there will be people that listen to one episode and say, "Oh my gosh, there's no way I could listen to this chick again," because mm. I've done that to other people's podcast. I've mm. gone to them for some value. And then I'm like, mm, like it was still know. good value, but yeah. I, I'm going to go yeah. somewhere else. So just remember that, like, you're going to have people that love you and they are your loyal mm. fans and they just will shout you from the rooftops. And then you have people that, you know, it's, you're going to fall on deaf ears and they're just yeah. not really going to care. And that's okay. Yeah. That is okay. That's it's totally fine. And not taking it personally, too. Right. I feel like a lot of right. people are like, I just want everyone to love me and like me. Right. And it's like, well, the amount of people that love you, there's also going to be the amount of people that don't. And that's right. okay. They're just right. not. They're just not you. Right? They're right. just not you. Right. Exactly. <gasps> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So tell us what you have going on. We're so happy to hear you have, you're launching a course. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. So I have a course that um, I've launched it a few times and it's awesome. so funny because all of this was like kind of birthed from a friend asking me questions all like she was almost to the point and she'll laugh because I'm going to tell her I said this, but <laughs> I was, it was like at the point where like, I'm like, why don't you know this stuff already? Like stop yeah. asking me these questions. And then yeah. she said, you should create a course. And so I totally oh, I have to that. credit. So Jackie, that's shout out to you. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> she like would just annoyed me so much with questions. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start this course. And I wrote it all down and like, one sitting and I said, Oh my gosh, like I, I can do this because this is what I needed on mm -hmm. day one when I felt just overwhelmed with all the things. So, um, I'm launching oh. it in August. Um, Ooh, it's going to be wow. towards the end of August. I just finished all the lessons and it's going to be, um, wow. like videos where I'm telling you exactly what to do and then assignments because oh, I am just, like I said, the planning part <laughs> is so essential. Yeah to everything else. Because once you have a plan and you do mm. all the basics that no one really wants to do, like, let's be honest, it kind of stinks to yeah. sit in that creative space of like, yeah. what am I going to call it? What's my tagline yeah. going to be? How's the format? Like after, yeah. but once you get past that, the mm. marketing is so much easier because mm. you know what your show's about. You know exactly who you're talking to mm. and you know what's ahead. Like it's so cool to be able to sit on a podcast episode and say, I'm excited because down the road, we're going to have an episode about branding or we're going to have mm. an episode about, you know, ditching the nine to five and, you know, bridging mm. that gap with your podcast or whatever it could be. But, um, it's just, it makes everything so much easier to do that. But I would mm. love for your audience to check out the profit yeah. podcast, because if you're just kind of thinking about it, you don't know if a podcast is right for you. Mm. I share just all the behind the scenes stuff. And if you enjoy this conversation, like y'all, this is how I am. <laughs> I say a lot of y'all. I tell silly stories. I, I love that. I've done some poetry in there. <laughs> like it's just kind of, it's just me. 
I love that. I love that. And we're getting a few comments. So I just want to okay. just shout out people that are watching. Cynthia's watching. Uh, she's a virtual assistant for podcasters. So that's really exciting. That's awesome. Um, and then I think we just had a few other people that were joining and just loving on us and I'm just happy we're here. Um, Monica says, hi, Crystal. This is so cool. Yeah. Which is awesome. Hi, Monica. <laughs> I love well, I want to address, did you said it was Kathy? Is that what her name uh, was? Who was it that's the virtual assistant? Cynthia. 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 Okay, so Cynthia. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you said this because if you're watching this and you're a virtual yeah. assistant, podcasting is just getting bigger. And in the podcasting yeah. community, True. the number one question that people are asking is, how can I outsource my editing? Because there's some people that don't, they don't want to deal with, you know, I'm comfortable with technology and I'm yeah. fine learning all these things, but there's people out there that say, I don't want to do this. And they're so happy to pay someone to do it. So if you're a virtual uh -huh. assistant, like get in on the podcasting, cause it's just going up from here. Like it's not going away anytime yeah. soon. So, no. and that's so smart too, because there's a lot of people where that are like, uh, no, I'm done. This is not my expertise. Yes. I prefer to be creative in this space and everything else is just going to be everything else. Yes, exactly. I love and then we got your little one is so cute. I yes. right now. <laughs> we made it all the way through though, because I was oh, yeah, like, we did. Oh my we, gosh. no, no, this was amazing. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. I love it. So, it's not gonna open. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. And if anyone has any other questions, feel free to comment below and join the conversation. If you have any other questions for crystal, um, my audience as well, this is a great opportunity to jump on that, right? And get anything you can. Um, Crystal, you have, reminds me back in the day, Miss talking to you. Oh. Yeah, he's just like, he's trying to open the door and like the rug is stuck and he can't open it. Oh. But for anyone interested, yeah. yes, like hit me up on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at Crystal Prophet TX. Okay. And then, um, you can go to crystalprofit.com and mm. that's where all the things are that you want to know about. There's a page. Um, it's the start here page. You can mm. learn everything you need to know, like in a snapshot, like what goes into podcasting and then you can decide whether it's for you or not. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you so much, Crystal. Yes, thank you so thank much you for, for having me, Danielle. And just so great. This is fun. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Value and grace. Value like, that's and grace. That's value and grace. Two things. If you don't get anything <laughs> from this conversation, it's value and grace, right? Value and grace. Awesome. Yes. Thank, thank you. you so much for having Have me, Have a great Danielle. day, Crystal. Bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. You. Bye.